Ladies and gentlemen, come gather in, come gather in, come gather around. Today, we're gonna make a pencil case. Oh yeah, hinge lid, awesome pencil case for casing all your pencils. Yeah, here we go. In the black book, you'll find the instructions for the pencil case. Oh yeah, one of my favorites. It does have fancy instructions like read these instructions before you begin because literacy is the nemesis of many a child. Tells you what kind of tools we're going to need, what kind of crazy mad tight skills we're going to need. Gives you step by step instructions. It's like a mini me right here in the palm of your hands, only less annoying. And it shows you pieces by pieces by pieces. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward project. There's only a few places that get a little screwy. I have given these plans to a kid and said, figure it out, let me know if it goes wrong. And they ended up with pencil cases and they were grade eights. I was impressed. So this all works fairly well. We're gonna give you the video to make that happen for you. Here we go. We're starting with a piece of galvanized sheet metal. It's the same tin we use for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. If you look at the ceiling, you can see heating and ventilation and air conditioning stuff up there. Same materials, same materials. I took the liberty of cutting out the computer design patterns that are here. Uh, computer design just means really accurately done wrong. And you can follow these instructions, you can follow the black book. I recommend following the black book. This was my original version, it's cryptic. Cryptic is a fancy word which here means not quite enough information. However, let's see if we can follow it. These instructions can keep you on task. They are not as thorough and detailed and useful as the black book. So follow the black book because you've got it in the room. First step, glue sparingly in center only. All right, sparingly is a fancy word which means not much. I've got a tin can labeled scissors and glue. Do not run with these. So I've cut these out, I've got some glue sparingly in the center. Sparingly means not much. That way you can remove the paper when we're all done. If you glue the mother loving snot out of it, it's a little bit harder to do. Now in this case, I've pre-cut all the tin and if I did a good job of it, this thing should fit fairly well. If it overhangs with metal a little bit, that's totally fine. Shing, trim sheet to dotted line. Shing, because the metal's already done. Carefully center punch and Whitney punch all holes one eighth of an inch. Woo! Now, if you know somebody named Whitney, this is not an opportunity for you. <clears throat> this is a Whitney punch made by the Roper Whitney Company. That's all it is. It works really well, it's super easy. Inside the tips here, down here is a little punch thing that opens up with the opening of the handle and punches back down. The top and bottom are match sets. I got a bunch of different sizes. You wanna make sure you're using the smallest size punch I have, which is an eighth of an inch, roughly three millimeters, if you need to speak metric. But this thing needs a center punch mark. So we're gonna center punch this over here. I recommend center punching on the back of the vise. So I set this here. Center punch looks like so. Um, hammer. We're also gonna put on eye protection for two reasons. One, Princess Auto. And it actually says right here, warning, wear safety goggles, user and bystander. Bystander is whoever's standing by. If they're near you, they should wear um, eye protection because who knows what kind of quality this is. Second reason, I made the center punches and you never really trust anything made by anybody. So center punch, you're gonna set it up right in the middle of that bullseye as best you can and then just give it a love tap. You don't have to kill it. Try to get as centered as you can. Do all of these. <coughs> With all of the holes center punched, we can use the Whitney punch. With the Whitney punch, you'll find if you lift the handle up and you put the piece of metal in here, you can kind of lock in your center punch mark with the Whitney punch and you, doesn't, you don't even have to look at it. You can feel it lock into place. Then you can push down. Don't put your hand here. You're gonna crack your knuckles on this. I'll laugh at you. This has handles. That's where you put your hands. Just like when you're using the toilet, you flush the toilet with a handle. It's not a foot dull handle. So you just push this down, bunk, and it punches out the hole. Lift it up and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't remove it. Oh, what do I do? Just lift the handle more. It pops it right out for you. Then we got a hole. Nice. Now you can take it to church because it's holy. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Once you get all four holes punched, we need to cut off these little shaded areas over here and we can make that happen for us. Oh, by the way, carefully center punch, shing! Cut out the edges, here we go. There are three flavors of tin snips. They all have a purpose. They mostly all have a purpose. The green ones cut off the garbage on this side. So these are good for cutting around a piece of sheet metal like this and the waste end comes off there. These don't do a good job of cutting big pieces off. They can cut off like quarter inch or smaller slivers. That's what these are best for. This one goes the other way. The junk comes off this side. So that's good for cutting around this way. If you're left-handed, this might be the one for you. If you're right-handed, this might be the one for you. It really depends what you're cutting. I use both. What does the yellow one do, you ask? Oh my gosh, it doesn't really do either one particularly well. It doesn't really cut this way well. It doesn't really cut this way well. It sort of cuts straight. I don't use them. So if you can't decide which one to use, try a different one. If it's not working for you, if it's awkward, try a different one. There is a place for them. You'll figure it out. Uh, I tend to use these two the most, depending on what side of the metal I'm cutting on. So here we go. The reason for the holes is an aviation kind of thing. Just like when you're cutting two pieces of uh, sheet metal, or sorry, if you're cutting a piece of paper and you're trying to cut into a corner, you often cut too far. And if you cut too far, then it's more likely to continue splitting. So what I do is uh, drill a hole so I can terminate the cuts in the hole, not cut too far, and there's no chance that it's going to spread. A hole like this disperses the stress of the corner that you've just cut. Disperse is a fancy word that means spread out and get rid of. So we're going to slip into here. I didn't put a hole in this corner because it really doesn't matter all that much, especially for the way we're going to make it. Right in my eye. Good thing I'm wearing eye protection. Oh my gosh. And snippity doo da. And we'll cut all four sides. Corners, all four corners. Notice I'm switching between the green and the red handled snips. It all depends what I'm cutting. I do a fair bit of sheet metal cutting at home. So I use these enough to know which ones to use. Oh, that one had some good air time. I know which one to use depending on what it is I'm cutting. We'll go to this one. Mm -hmm. This is actually the boringest part of the whole thing. And annoying if you've never used tin snips before. But you know what? Who hasn't used tin snips? Woo! Woo! You'll notice a little bit of the overhangs on these flaps and hems totally doesn't matter. It's going to be okay. It's going to work out. And we'll show you that. Un momento, por favor. Then we got that guy. Then I'm going in here. There isn't really a specific order to cut these as long as they all get cut. I kind of have my way of doing it. Uh, just because it's the way I cut them, but it doesn't really matter. This is just the order I do it in. And we got it all cut. That's good. Oh, super important. Don't cut these off, you silly person. Don't do it. You need those. All right. Carefully cut out the edges. Shing. Then it says carefully fold the hems. Yes. That means we get to use this tool over here. Oh my gosh, the sheet metal brake. I love these. I love them so much I made one for myself. Check out the link right up here on how to build your own. Uh, but this one is a school's one. It's a good quality one. It's pretty rigid. It's only 24 inches wide, which is pretty fine for high school. I needed a bigger one. So how it works is this. On this end, we've got the clamp a downinator, and this holds your metal in place. And we've got the lifter upinator, which is right here, which folds it. For some twisted reason, some kids get this thing stuck in between the two pieces of metal. I have no idea how they do that. If that happens to you, show me what you did because I, I can't replicate it. So the first one is fold the hems. Hems are something like you have on clothing like this where it's folded over so the fabric doesn't fray and come apart. Uh, in the case of sheet metal, we're going to hem this so we don't reach in to get a pencil, slice our wrists and bleed dead to death. That's not the way you want to go. Um, getting, your, getting caught in the jaws of a combine or being killed by fighting off an attacking horde of enemy 
aliens while rescuing a stuck bag of chips from a vending machine. That's the way I want to go. So we're going to lift this up. And the important part is this little line inside here. Let's get close. So this line in between these two pieces, this edge right here, right above my thumb, that's what we're looking for. And you're going to line up the line on the line with the line. It's even right in the edge of this as well. So I'm going to line this up like so. And I'm going to line up the, the drawn line on the paper with the foldable edge, the edge of this right on there so it lines up. Then I'm going to clamp it down to the clampinator. I have, I have fingers adjusted to fit the pencil case because that's what we do on this a lot of. They're adjustable with these bolts up here. You can change it if you need to, but you probably don't have to. Then, with this thing clamped down with a hand lever clampinator, I'm going to pull the lifter upinator and lift it all the way up. Okay, and then I'm going to it's going to look kind of like this, eh? and then squish it. And that gives me a nice hem where I can't cut myself. Eh? I'm good. Don't look at the scar. All right, over here, same thing on the other side. Let's look at it from a different angle. Line up the line with the line on the line. And if you, the thing with sheet metal is it either freaking works or it kicks your butt. There's really no in between. So you got to make sure, well there's the handle going right past the screen, in the face, all the way up, squish it, two hems down, going for number three, that'll be these ones, you can put them in here, if you're feeling really frisky, you could do one while your buddy does one at the same time, and one of yours is going to be screwed up and I'll laugh the whole time I'm marking both of them, same thing, line up the line with the line of line, clamp it down, all the way up, open this up, squish it, yeah, one more to go, let's look at it from another angle, crazy other angle, <clears throat> again with the hems, line up the line with the line on the line, clamp it down, fold it up, unfold it, lift it up, squish it, hem victory, okay, now, where's my pen? All right, carefully fold hems, ching. Now it says carefully fold the long edges. The first one of you that comes to me and says, which edges should I fold first? I'm gonna laugh and laugh and then say, say that again. And you're gonna say it again and I'm gonna laugh some more. And then I'll draw your attention to this and you'll feel silly. So fold the long edges. If you're not sure, these are the long edges. These are the short edges. There we go. Lift this up in here. And actually I'm gonna move over to this side just because it's a little bit wider spaced. And again, you line up the line of the line of the line, make sure you've got that thing totally lined up, dog. Don't even fake it. Clamp it down, and then I'm gonna fold this up 90 degrees. I actually have to bend it a little fart past 90 degrees because metal tends to be springy. In fact, we make springs out of metal, and it springs back a little bit. So you gotta bend it a little bit further so when it springs back, it is vertical. Trial and error, we'll figure it out for you. That's looking pretty good, know what I'm saying? Now, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Line up the line of the line of the line. Sheet metal is not forgiving. It either works or does not work. Kind of like some of the students I've had. We're going to lift this up to about 90 degrees. That looks absolutely dandy. Now we have a risk. We've got a challenge for you to do that we need to do. And for that, we need the smallest flat blade screwdriver I have in the shop. Presto, here it is. We got the flat blade screwdriver. It's got a black handle. You can probably find it with the screwdrivers. What we need to do is we're gonna to need to try and tuck these little tabs into here. So when we fold the ends up, it starts off like this. We need to get the tab part to come inside. It's gonna be fitting together kind of like that. That's kind of what we're looking for. To make this little tab fit inside here really well, we're gonna spread this little hem a little bit. If you really flatten this, this is gonna be more work for you. So here's what I do. <clears throat> First, take your non-screwdriver hand and move it as far to the back as you can. That way when this screwdriver, when we're going in here and we're giving it the wiggle, 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 yeah. If this thing slips out, you've got a ways to go before you stab yourself in the finger. So we spread it a little bit there, flip it over this way, your hand is way far away. In English, this is called foreshadowing. Put this in here, give it a little wiggle, 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 yeah. Animal print pants out of control, yo. 
And we'll do this side. Same thing. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. And we've got the ends opened up. Now, we have a spot to fold these, which I've already adjusted right over here. Let's get closer. So for this fold, I confess, I don't use the lifter uppinator. I just fold this up by hand. So I'm gonna clamp this in here just like we did before. But as I mentioned before, we want this tab to go inside here, but when we fold this up, they're right inside with each other. And if you try to fold it, it's gonna crush and buckle, and that will be a problem. So to make sure these clear these, what I do is I pull this apart a little bit with my fingers. It's not really that onerous. I don't even work out. So I push this out a little bit to get it started. Once it gets starts and it clears down below, then I squeeze these back in to make sure the tabs go inside the little uh, ends of it, kind of like that. If you use the lifter uppinator, you tend to put a crease right in here. I can show you how to remove the crease, but it's better if you don't end up with it at all. And to make that happen, I just fold by hand. Same thing on the other side. Clamp it down to the line of the line of the line of the line. Spread it apart like you mean it. Put this thing open. Once it clears, squeeze it back together. Push it all the way up. Pat the back of the person next to you. And Bob's your uncle. You know my uncle, Bob. Yeah, he doesn't like you. Now, see it's all nicely folded up. We've got a good bottom of the pencil case. No sharp edges to kill you. Yay! Let's work on the top. The top of the pencil case is pretty much the same poo, just a different shovel. We've got a different, slightly different design. We're gonna cut it out as well, following the cuts with the cuts, because we like to do the cuts. You don't have to be immensely precise with the scissors, which for some of you is a huge relief. Because all of this gets folded up and hidden, and it doesn't really matter, it's not really all that visible. Now, we're gonna stick this down to a piece of sheet metal. I usually cut all the sheet metal the same size for all the pieces, so I really only have to set up the cutter once. Just like before, we're gonna glue sparingly in the middle. If you're a smart cookie, you're probably gonna discover that if you put this in the corner, you only have to cut two sides, which would be awesome news. Look at your friend who's probably plunked it right in the middle and now has to cut four sides off of the sheet metal kind of dumb. Using material and saving material and making it last is going to make your boss a happy panda because if you can save a little bit of money on everything, collectively, that's a lot. Look after the nickels and dimes and the loonies look after themselves. Okay, cut this. The tin snips aren't going to be happy. You can do it, but it's not going to be happy. I got a better tool for cutting this off. It's over here. The foot shear. I affectionately refer to this as the finger shortener. It's basically the guillotine, like in French places, eh? You take a foot pedal here, inside this spot is a blade that's gonna come and shear off the piece of sheet metal. In the top, I look through these. There's a sight window which I find useless. I look in through this slot in the top. Let's have a look. So looking in through the top, you can see where the table ends. I can slide my sheet metal through like this and where the edge of the table is, that's where the edge of your material is going to be. So I line up, again, line up the line with the line where the edge of the table is, that's where it's going to cut. Then you don't even have to hold it. I just kind of put my hand there, I put my foot on the foot lever and put all 97 pounds of my body on here and it cuts. Then I'm going to do the other side. Same thing, slide it underneath, look through the top where the table ends. That's where your sheet metal is going to end. Stop. You can also, while you're here, cut these little angle pieces off. All you got to do is set it in at an angle. Line up that cut with the edge of the table. Where the table ends, it ends. Boom. That's awesome. All right. And then, with the last cut, we're done with this machine. And we can make like Henry VIII and head off. Back to the back of the vise for some center punch love. Same thing as before. Try to get that in the center. Love tap. Although honestly, if your love tap, and, if your love tap is like this, that's a restraining order waiting to happen. 
What is critical is this hole right there. That one is critical. This one, not so much. That one's critical. Nail that one good. We need it later. Back over to the Whitney punch and we can Whitney punch these holes. Same thing, find your center punch mark. Bada bing. Bada boom. Forget about it. Lock it in. Lock in your votes. Call a friend. And back to the ever wonderful tin snips of love. Snip. Snip. The red ones take the junk off the left side. The green ones take the junk off the right side. Somewhere in there is the magic that will make you cry. And that's done. Let's go fold it. This is a little easier. We just have four hems, three folds, but it's pretty much the same thing you've done before. So we're going to fold it to a hem all the way up, squish it, Neck size, line up the line of the line of the line, all the way up, squish it, next one, all the way up, squish it. It is important that you're actually using these lines. I can't stress that enough. There's so many kids that just can't seem to line up a line with a line, which is kind of why I'm going over the top with this. If you want this to work, you need to do it. Last hem, same thing, man. It's awesome, all the way up. Squish it. Now we've got four, three, three sides to fold. 90 degrees. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter what order to do. I haven't even been checking off the order. I should check off the order. I confess though, I've been doing this more than once. So uh, I've done this once or twice. All right, where's my pen? Where's my pen? All right, glue sparingly. Ching, trim to touch. Ching, carefully center punch. Ching. Carefully cut the edges, fold hems, fit the, oh, I didn't check the fit, I should do that. I wish I had checked this before. Let's see if it fits. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's like it's meant to be. Man, this is like heaven in sheet metal. Moving on. Checked, fold edge, edge, assemble lid and base. We need to do that. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, this next part is confusing for so many kids and I have no idea why. We're going to pick a nice side, like so. We're going to put the two things together. If you have an ugly side, put the ugly side at the back because people aren't going to see that. If they open this, they're always going to see the open part. So whatever makes the best appearance, make sure you show the best appearance. Same thing when you're going for a job interview, you want to show your best appearance, wear your best clothes, show up ready to work kind of thing. Okay, you're going to squeeze this with your fingers. Keep sure it's nice and tight like a tiger. You're going to put it in a vise like so, and we're going to squeeze the vise only until the back edge of the lid is touching the jaw. It has to be below the top of the vise. You squeeze it only enough to get the back of the lid to touch this. Notice how the back of the lid is touching this. This touches this. That edge is touching this. Am I making myself clear? Then. We put on our safety glasses. We're going to use a, we're going to come a bit closer. Don't be shy. It's just power tools. You got this. I'm going to use these little double-ended drill bits. They're actually dubious quality. Dubious is a fancy word that means I doubt it. Um, they're double-ended so that when you break one, um, you still have another end. In English, this is foreshadowing. I'm going to use a cordless drill. It really doesn't matter. And with this, just make sure it grabs the shank. It's nice and tight like a tiger. Squeeze these together with your hand. The hole you punched is going to keep that drill bit in place. It's not going to fall out and drill through your hand unless you got the hippie shake shakes going on. Squeeze this to make sure the lid stays closed. Put this in here, pull the trigger, and let the drill bit do its work. Then we're going to pop rivet this. These are pop rivets. This is a pop rivet gun. How does it work, you ask? I'm glad you asked. It goes like this. The pop rivet has a stick with a ball on the end, and then it's got this kind of top hat sort of thing. The pop rivet gun grabs the stick and pulls the ball through the top hat, and it distorts it. It goes kind of like this. 
I put it in here like so. And then as I squeeze, if that can focus, here's a background so it'll focus. As I squeeze the triggers of the pop rivet gun, see how the ball is being pulled in here and it distorts it? That distortion stops the rivet from coming out of the hole. Once you've squeezed it, it's screwed. You can't use that anymore. This, for you, I sacrificed. All right, we take one of these, stick it in the hole, should go all the way down, put this thing in here like so, squeeze the handles. You usually have to open it up, push it down again a little bit more, and then it pops off, hence the name, pop rivet gun. Flip it around like the verb of the noun and do the other side. Make sure this whole pencil case is below the top of the vise. Squeeze the lid and thing only enough to get the back against the vise. The jaws are touching this. The lid piece is against here. Squeeze it with your fingers. Put the drill bit in there, pull the trigger and give her. All right. Second pop rivet, put it in here. Rivet gun like the. Squeeze a reezer together twice. Boom, she goes. We have a pencil case. Oh yeah, the first time you open it, it's usually a little bit tight and difficult to open, but the more you work it, the easier it's gonna become. And these rivets become hinges, and it works great. Lots of kids keep these for years. My wife still has hers. I didn't teach my wife, that's creepy. We went to different schools, we're like the same age. But she made one 100 years ago. We just made one this just like brand new. It's like vintage already. We could make it distressed. Now, theft is a reality and we don't want stuff to get stolen. So we're gonna put your name on this. I use these as mini anvils. The trick with these is you need to be quick when you're getting them. Because once a train shows up, you're gonna have a bad day. This sits on here. I'm gonna put the lid on here like so whatever way is going to work for me. And then I'm going to stamp my name in here using letter stamps. Ah, oh, every letter of the Roman alphabet. The Roman alphabet? Yes. And you can put your name on here. I'm going to put my stage name on here. And for that, you pick the letters that you want, set it on here, try to rock it back and forth and make sure it sits nice and flat. Bang that puppy in there. And uh, make sure you don't put the letters in backwards or upside down. <clears throat> and you want to hit it kind of once, like you mean it. You don't want to hit it a whole bunch of times. It's not like uh, nails, where you just got to keep hitting it harder and harder. Hit it once like you mean it. If your name starts with a B, you want to have a B, not a B, -b, 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 -b unless you're B, -b, -b, -b bad to the bone. All right. My stage name, there it is. And my last letter on here. Now, if you're heavy handed like me, you may find that you really dented the sheet metal. If you don't like that, you can flip it over, use one of these body hammers to just gently persuade it flat again. This is, this is gonna be fingertip hammering, not death hammering. It's just like, let this thing bounce and control the fall. No muscle, no effort. So you get it nice and flat. And then I've got my stage name on there just for you. Does that say Trixie? Yes, with two X's, because I'm double X rated. Oh yeah. And that's the pencil case in your face. Oh yeah. Oh, you can certainly rip this stuff out with uh, some soapy water. The paper comes right out. And that's why we used sparing amount of glue so it comes out really easy. I don't care, so I'm leaving it in. You could even upholster it in the most beautiful French crushed velvet interior. Eh? Oh, may we. There it is. Woo! Let's go. Thanks for watching.